All right. Welcome along, everybody. Tonight we are talking about all about beads. So what I'm really going to get into is we're going to go into the differences between tungsten brass. I even have some rubber beads here that I've used on lake stuff, which are very you don't see very often. We'll go into what they're even used for. Glass beads, whole nine yards. So what I'm going to start off with. Hopefully we get more people joining in here as we go. But I'm going to start off with telling the different types of beads that you're normally going to see. So, we're going to start with some more of the standard stuff. You have your tungsten, which I know you really can't tell by looking at them here. You have your tungsten beads, your brass beads. Those are your two main categories as far as your basic beads. And we're going to, as far as there's advantages and disadvantages to both. Your tungsten, especially in the Euro nymphing world, which we've been doing for a while, <clears throat> Those are your really key beads as far as helping get down in fast water. Most of your Euro Nymph flies that you're going to see here talking about in a lot of the styles. That's your Czech Nymph, any of that kind of stuff. Guys are usually using text, tungsten beads and adding on some lead and really getting some heavy, heavy flies. So that's kind of your norm with that. Brass beads, don't forget about them. A lot of guys do. I did for a while. A lot of guys that get immersed in this Euro Nymph and stuff, they totally forget about your tungsten. They totally give to the tungsten and totally forget about the brass beads. But in low water conditions, sometimes a brass bead is really all you need to get down. And I'm talking low if you're even a couple feet of water, as long as it doesn't have much current to it in that late spring, early summer stuff. That's sometimes even more than enough. So don't give up totally on brass beads. Don't abandon them. There's a time and a place for them. Just like there's a time and place for no beads, unweighted flies, everything. It's all fair game. And that's one misconception you see with guys that have gotten into the comp board and they get head hardcore. They just think it's all tungsten. That's all they want. Not true. Okay, next I'm going to go over your basic bead sizes per hook. And if you look on a Trout Legend store, we have... Uh, a basic setup for that of what you consider would be your normal for each bead. I did have that here, but I seem to have lost that paper. But anyway, each bead size, if you look at the chart, the charts that we have chart on Trout Legend. So if you get into your smaller size beads, each size is a recommended size, but do not just use that. One thing I do myself is, is a lot of them will interchange with some of these Euro hooks. So say on a size 12 hook, if you got a thin shank and you can get a few different sizes of beads, what I'll do a lot of times, and I know a lot of other guys do, is I may have a set of the same fly that I know is working. I have it in 3.5 all the way down to 2.5. So 3.5 millimeter bead, I got a dozen or so of them tied. I got a half a dozen, a dozen to the 3.0 and the 2.5. Five. That covers three different weights with the same fly. It sounds simple. You're thinking, what the heck, I can just change weight. But no, you can actually get little subtle differences in the drift where you're holding in different water depths and, and speed like that. And that's actually a key. If you look at a lot of the upper end guys, they're using a bunch of different weights. And then even on top of that, they'll throw in brass beads and get a couple other weights. And if you use lad and stuff like that, and I've weigh in beads the whole nine yards, and you can really get a lot of things. And if you really want to dial it in that much, I do recommend, I got this little powder scale here. If you're really dialing in weights, you set it on here, get your weights, and go like that. Just to give you guys a little quick demo of that. And I'm going to see if I can move the camera to show, but you're not going to really be able to see much. So I'm just going to actually weigh um, a 3.5 bead on here. Let this zero out and just give you the weight differences to kind of give you an idea on why it's worthwhile. And every little bead has a slight subtle difference. So this is your 3.5 millimeter tungsten silver bead, and I'm getting three, I'm getting 0 0.32 grams. Okay, so we're gonna take that down a, a size and we're gonna go into the 3.0. Now remember, this is when you're trying to get different weights and you can use the same fly. So I can usually, a size 12, a size 14, I can probably get both of these beads on there at least. So this is your 3.0 bead. My weight is 10 grams lighter. So if you kind of think of that and you end up going down 10 grams or so per thing, it may not seem like a huge deal, but at times that little subtle difference, and it's or not so subtle, can make a big difference. And now to that same realm, 
say if we're going to go with a brass bead of the 3.0, you get that on there. And a brass bead 3.0 is 1.12 grams. So that's a big difference. And then I know from experience the 2.5 is a little bit in there. It's around 16, 17 grams. Fairly close sometimes to the brass beads of that. But still, if you can see, you can really change those ideas up like that. If you look at a box, and I don't have mine handy right with me, but I might have something here. Yeah, but if my box, I I have a section in my box that's going to be almost all Frenchies, all pheasant tails, or stuff to that nature, or even just thread bodies. And you'll see if it's a fly that I have confidence in, like my waltz worms and some other flies that I use a lot, there's five, six rows. Well, every one of them rows is a slight different weight. Same size, same fly, tied the same way. Slight different weight, slight different size bead. And it really can help you dial in stuff, especially when you're not going to use split shot. Like with your nymphing, you're not going to go ahead and use split shot. So split shot's a whole other deal. We'll get into stuff with that down the road in another one of these. But uh, that kind of covers your basics on the weight stuff. Like I said, I didn't, the size stuff, there's the basic charts out there and just remember if you look at some of these thinner hooks that's one of the reasons that you see a lot of these comp guys really like the thinner hooks especially some of these jig style hooks they're looking for that thin strong lead and they're a, the ability to be able to put more beads on there all right next up i'm going to go into the one thing that's kind of demystifies everybody if you look on trout ledge or any other place that really sells beads and if they got a selection you're going to see something kind of like this so Here's my silver. Here's my copper. I also mixed in here, I have some unfinished, some pink, some anodized pink there. I got, I got yellow, I got orange, I got light pink, I got dark pink. Um, pink and fluorescent pink and fluorescent orange. Chartreuse, chartreuse is a good color at times. But you get the idea. I got even. I even have some white in there. Some, some white, not finished, nothing. Every color does have a time and a place. Now, if I was gonna say, if I was stuck with one color bead, personally, and it comes down a lot to confidence, but I do have some good, solid reasons for this. I really am a fan of the unfinished bead. Um, and really, my main reason is for that is that it's got a little bit of flash, but not a whole lot. Yet, it's subtle enough where usually it doesn't put off wild fish, stuff like that. Before I go to a darker color bead, like or even black black, a lot of times I will go to the unfinished. Or if I'm starting off for a day, I tend to start with an unfinished bead. If nothing's happening, I may switch it up. Uh, but... Nine times out of ten, I got at least one unfinished bead if I'm running a, if I'm running two flies on some of my stuff, or if it's one fly, I'm using that. Now there are certain circumstances where I like to I get away from that quite a bit. Hi, sunny weather. I have become a big believer in silver beads, and silver beads are also my next most go-to color. And I think you'll find that with a lot of guys I've run into, especially on the upper level with the competitive stuff. Is silver is a good color. Um, few reasons that I think that is. One, there is a theory that I had a lot of the southern guys tell me that they feel that that silver bead, just something about it, high sunny, high sun midday, it just works. I really feel, and I've had this discussion with some other guys, just trying to brainstorm why is it at times it seems like that one color, that color works. And with silver, I think it really looks like an air bubble. I found when their bugs are active, silver is my better color. Especially early in the spring, you got the blue wing olives. I always have some blue wing olive nymphs and even some other stuff in that realm, like scuds, things like that. The bugs are starting to move up. They got some air bubbles going. Maybe they're, you know, crustaceans, they're starting to grow. They're losing their case. You got that. And the silver doesn't seem to put off the fish as bad as, say, gold. I use gold. Is gold my favorite color? Absolutely not. And I think the main reason for that is if you go to most fly shops, 99% of your beaded flies that they're selling guys are gold beads. So I think in a lot of these high pressured streams, trout see it so much that it ends up being equated to danger. Now with that, there are times I do like gold beads, a little off colored water, 
things of that nature. I don't mind gold beads. I do have some. I don't mind them on my streamers at all, but I don't think the bead is as big of a deal all the time with streamers. But if I'm tying some woolly buggers or some little stuff like that, I'll use gold beads. I use a lot of brass with some of my streamers too, especially if I'm going to be stripping in shallower water. But gold is probably my least favorite color. Unfinished and silver, they're right on par with each other as my two favorite colors. I also do use a lot of copper. And one of the reasons I use copper quite a bit is I have found copper to work really well in tannic color or slightly off colored water, specifically that tannic color. In the fall, when you start getting the leaves dying off, you'll see that little tinge of brown color to some of the water. I know New York is prevalent for that, and it's really something about that gold must stand out because I've had really good luck in those conditions. But gold is also not too far away from silver in that realm. Good color. Good all around. I don't think it's as heavily used commercially, but it is used commercially. So if you guys that are buying flies, you can usually still find some stuff in copper beads. Uh, hot beads, then. This is I guess we'll get into. Well, there's a few th reasons these work. Unfortunately, when it comes to stocked fish, I think it just gets their attention. So you get some stuff and you use these, like these particular ones here. You get that bright orange color. There's something about that that they'll stock rainbow trout and even brook trout just love. And I don't know. They're like they're genetically set to go after colors that remind them of eggs, whatever it is. They go after them. And I'm talking ugly, stupid, gaudy patterns. And the names like the pumpkin heads, the, the pumpkin head pheasant tail, different things like that. And you hear these in corn fed calves with a yellow bead. It's just on just a. There's really nothing in nature that really, really looks like that. But for some reason, the trout are attracted to that. Also with the orange beads, there are certain times of year and certain things that actually will make some nymphs get an orange tint to them. Uh, fungus, there's diseases and stuff I've read that will actually affect certain nymphs. It will give an orange tint. If you do some saning and stuff, you'll see a, an orangish color. Not necessarily that hot orange, but I think what you're getting when you use the orange bead is it's... It's extenuating that a little bit. So that's coming down. That fish has already identified, hey, orange, that's either a wounded nymph or something that's an easier meal. They go after it. So orange beads are a good color. And I've caught some wild trout on orange beads. I really have, especially in a lot of places where there's scuds and that in the right water conditions. It's always worth a shot. Um, spring, it's good, especially some of our streams in Ireland, Pennsylvania, and other parts of the Northeast, and I'm sure across the country, really, wherever there's suckers that are spawning in the spring, it's not too far off from the sucker spawn color. In the fall, that same bead color is also fairly similar to what you have your trout that are spawning. It's not, I'm not saying target spawning fish. That's the last thing I would ever tell you to do. But if you're there and you can see fish behind your feet, your spawning fish, Orange beads and stuff like that are usually a good color. I'd recommend an egg pattern, but if you want to, if you're against egg patterns, some little subtle nymphs in that with that orange bead will kind of get the job done. Okay, next color we have on the docket. I'm gonna go with some hot colors that have out there the last few years, and this is one that you see quite a bit. Um, try to see if you guys can see that there. That's the pink anodized bead. I've gotten to the point where I really do like these beads. I find that they definitely seem to work. Why? I'm not absolutely sure. But they're good color. They are a little bit, I think it's just something different. There might be a reason for it. I've never delved into the color. Some of these things, as far as how the colors are at depth, changes a little bit. But that's a good color bead. I've had real good luck with those, pink be those anodized pink beads. So definitely a color Waltz worms, some other stuff. Have a few of those patterns, and you don't need to get fancy with it as far as that nymph and stuff, but that is a good color bead. Now, after that, some of the other colors that are a little bit out there, but still pretty good. I use white a lot. I use white on my midges, and I use white sometimes on my small little size 18 thread body nymphs. Again, with... With the midges, I know, I think it looks like the wing bud or even an air bubble when they're starting to emerge. I'm using it on some brass beads and stuff like that. But I've used it on other stuff and had pretty good luck. White, I don't think is too far from silver as far as what the fish are really seeing. So it's also got that might look like an air bubble depending on the depth and that kind of thing. But uh, it's a good color. 
Hey, hey, thanks for the like, Seth. But um, that is kind of where I'm at with that. Another one, which I'm going to see if you guys can see here. This container doesn't show real well, but if you look, I also have black. Just regular black painted coated beads. Good color. I use them on a lot of my Caddisfly imitations. It's also not a bad color at all to have on your normal nymphs and stuff. Especially when trout, you'll find times, especially when they're heavily pressured, they're off on bright colors altogether. So, black is also a color that's worth having some. And if you haven't noticed here, the biggest thing you're seeing is, holy crap, this guy's got a ton of beads. Yeah, it's, it is one thing when you really get into it. And um, it's one thing where it works if you find a deal, things of that nature. But uh, Trout Legend does have a good supply of this stuff. And I honestly have not had too much bad luck with them. And I recommend using them. And I do know one thing. You got to, if you have an issue with it, get your money back. Send them in. Contact. Not a problem. So... All these colors we talk about, I know we have in the store. If we don't have them, there's no order probably coming on the way if they're not in the store. So please check it out. And if you tell them we sent you, hey, it's only going to help us out. Maybe next time around I can work you guys out with a little bit of deal for joining in. So please keep commenting. As I was mentioning before, if you guys were interested in winning the 100 beads I talked about. So yeah, I drug you on for a little bit here before we got into this. Please, comment, ask a question. Now's the time I'm looking if you guys got any questions, things like that. So I'm going to take one of the guys that comments questions, going to get 100 beads from the Trout Legend store. So comment, question away if you're interested in winning that. So I'll wait here. I'll keep talking if you got any questions. Thanks, Seth. And we were actually going over some of the weight before a lot of you guys got in. And if anyone's interested, I got my little I got my little powder scale here. If anybody kind of was interested on what the thing is, because it's not something everybody's done, but I've done it for a while. And got that, that kind of stuff works real well. Now, on the other style of beads, another thing I like to use a lot, especially on my lighter flies, are the glass beads. And I have these black, red, clear. I got some peacock ones that are pretty cool. But these here are your normal fly tying beads. We do have some of those in the store. But also, I have gone, you can get them at the craft store. Yes, I did talk about tungsten and beads stuff in the beginning. If you have any question, I can go back over that again. I got no problem there. But here's the glass beads. Tungsten, if you, again, if it, tungsten I've covered in the first part here because I figured that was, but I can go over some of this stuff again. Glass beads, black ones. I got these at probably Joanne Fabrics or Michael's or another craft store. I don't remember. But I like them a lot on my midges. That's like, yeah. I'm not going to say I use beads all the time, but I use them quite a bit. And honestly, I think they one of the reasons I do use them, you know, Jordan, thanks for the question. I know a lot of guys do is they're easy and quick to put the weight on the hook. So when it comes to your tying a lot of these flies and you're losing them, you're going to be nymphing. You can really just makes it a little easier as far as having the weights. And one of the things is it adds more weight. It front weights the weight, so your nymph actually will either ride upside down, either on a jig hook or even some of the other hooks, get to the bottom quicker versus adding lead onto the bait and stuff like that. And I'll get to your question there, Jason. Um, but that's one of the reasons I really, that the guys really like to use beads. And I think part of it is some of these with the colors and things like that, they do give some actual fish catching and grab some attention. Do you have to use slotted jig hooks? Absolutely not. Um, I actually use both kinds of beads. I use slotted beads and I use the regular just basic whatever they call them. I don't know what cyclops beads I guess a lot of guys call them. I do use those too. No, you don't. I use them on any kind of hook. Any kind of hook I can get them on. Um, you just don't want to use, if you're going to do with barbed hooks, don't use sprout hooks which have that tight bend 90 percent of these beads even the slotted beads will not get around them it's but other than that i use them on just about everything uh and when i say everything you can use them on any kind of nymph things like that and there are is it all i use no there's other there's flies where i use no weight to nymph there's flies where i'm using just a little bit of lead but it definitely don't think you need to use it on 
jig hooks. Yeah, they look cool. They are nice. They do have some pluses as far as having the jig hooks. And we'll get into hooks in another thing. But just like that, jig hooks, one of the advantages to using jig hook is you tend to really hook a lot of your fish right in the front tip of the mouth there. And that actually helps landing the fish better is another reason why you're seeing them being used in the comp thing. And a little bit of background on where they originated from because they're not designed for trout originally. Those jig hooks were designed for European grayling. And if you look at the European grayling, they're a bottom feeder. They got a mouth kind of like our sucker or even a carp. Uh, probably closer to like a bone fishing, but they're bottom feeder. So that hook points up and they got a little rougher mouth. So when they come up and that hook rides up and gets them real good. Just a little bit of caveat. That's just a little extra information if you really look into this European stuff. Most of it was actually designed for catching grayling and brown trout. But over here we've modified it quite a bit. And it really, it's not too far off from what you'd seen guys like Harvey and Humphreys doing for years. All right, man, thanks for signing. Any other questions out there before I go into some other little things here? Now... I'm going to go into lakes. When it comes to beads in lakes, and I'm probably going to lose some of you guys because lakes aren't something everybody does. I tend to use mostly brass beads, and you will find that that's what the majority of your guys are using when they're out there. So, on lakes, brass beads. One of the colors I really like, if you can see this here, is your chartreuse. For some reason, at depth, Chartreuse really seems to work well in lakes. Uh, especially match with some buggers or even some damsel nymphs and things. Black black buggers, all of damsel stuff. That's a real good color. How much difference does tungsten make with bead-headed nymphs? Well, it really depends. Uh, now, I know where you fish a lot. So I know like at Harmon's, I use tungsten beads down there. You get deeper, faster water. Like some of the pocket waters, in particular that area, just as an example. Those tungsten beads are going to allow you to get down faster without using lead in a lot of cases. Now, you can use lead, you can go down, you can get in there, and you can catch the fish. But if you're going to go down and you want to have a tighter connection, by using tungsten beads and weighted flies, and those tungsten beads give you a lot of extra weight, you really can get down and have a tighter connection to your nymphs and allows you for better strike detection, especially when you're not using an indicator. Mostly they're made for tight line tactics, but I use them quite a bit with uh, indicator stuff too, just because I'd rather not have lead. It's personal preference there, but it does kind of, I notice, sometimes help with strike detection, especially on tight line nymphs. And let's see if I can go back here. Man, this stinks. I can't go back on the conversation too easily. Okay. Hopefully that covered that a little bit, Fred. But there's a lot of there's a lot of reasons as far as tungsten and why it's not a bad idea. Okay, we go back to lakes there. Okay, simple as time flies. So the large white beads with several black beads to fill out the hook, bright orange thread. I'm not exactly sure what that would look like. If anybody else has any ideas, or if you even want to post a picture in a thread, I'd be interested to see what that looked like. Um, Catskill caddy, but that I can't even imagine. Large followed by set. So you're basically daisy chaining, I guess. Okay. On some off the wall beads, as far as on lake stuff. I have these, I don't even know where to get these anymore. I've seen them a while ago. I've used them. They're actually kind of interesting. They give a bead profile. They're made of like a rubber material. So if you look at these here, and they're interesting. They're ba just like your normal beads, but they're really, really almost foam, but not foam. So they don't, they give a counter buoyancy away in the lakes, which when you're using signal lines, it's kind of, it's not foam, but it's weird. But there's, there's weird things like that out there too that you'll see. If you're looing on lakes, you can play with in the bead realm. Um, turkey tail nymphs, I don't use those at all. But no, they're... Alright, what else do we have here? Any other questions? 
other than the mop or the turkey tail. So if I was going to recommend somebody just as far as to get started out with like a selection of, say, you already have your brass. You can go with whatever you have confidence in on the brass realm. I still use a lot of gold there because it's easy to get. I had a lot of it stockpiled from years ago, fly tying. Brass, copper, black, whatever. How do I store my beads? Good question. I actually use, get them at, they're called, I get them, I got them at Julian Fabrics. They're called Craft Master Lockables. I line them up by size and have them memorized. I should probably light right on here, but this is my, most of these I have, which is 2.0, 2.5, 3.0, 3.5. Sometimes I got some 4.0 depending on the color. But I actually hold all my beads in these craft or bead things. They also make, and I have these, so basically the same thing, but in a bigger size. You get them at a craft store. They're, used, they're usually near the jewelry beading department. Can't beat them. A couple bucks, I think, for these. Okay. Do you organize your flies by weight type bead in your fly boxes? Um, okay. Uh, Seth, yes and no. With some flies, I do organize them. I tend to go by fly, and then I go by weight. I know some guys will have a box that's their heavy stuff, light stuff. I tend to like to work out of one box, maybe two. So with my boxes, and hold on. With my boxes, what I like to do, this is my main nymph box. I can kind of show you guys. If you'll see, just this is a good section to show. That is all my waltz. Now they're kind of somewhat organized by either style or size, but I have an uh, these ones here in particular. I have an, I have an aisle, some in here, the heavier 3.5, all the way up, and along that same aisle I may have down to say 3.0 or 2.5, but I'll have them organized by fly and by weight for most of my stuff but I've seen guys do it either other either way I've seen some guys will have a box and this is their heavy this is their light this is their medium this is their unweighted and I will have a box I do have a box for unweighted nymphs that I use later in the year double beads just behind the hook eye yes I have done that I've actually as far as getting a lot of weight on a hook with a bead, if you can afford to use the beads, I've put as many as four or five beads on a hook. Now, to keep it comp legal and everything with that, got to cover everyone but the front bead, but I've had it and these flies were heavy. Which is the easiest way to be it's way to beat a lot of hooks. Honestly, as far as getting beads on the hooks, I, if I'm tying, I put all my beads on before I start tying the pattern, just to kind of make it a little quicker and easier that way. So if I know I'm going to tie a dozen of the pattern, I'll take the hooks out, get all my beads on them, and then I'll tie through like that. I don't know if that answers your question. And no, I'm not sending any fly box out. That's my main one there. There's probably about 900 flies in that thing. Why would a tire oversize the bead for hook size? One of the reasons that I know I will oversize the bead for the hook size is um, I want more weight sometimes on that fly. So fish are keying in to, say, sulfurs. Sulfur size 14. And that seems to be the nymph that's working. So I have my nymphs, say a pheasant tail or a turkey tail or even just my normal sulfur nymph that like you'd see out there in a fly shop. By putting on that extra weight on that front with that bead, I can get the fly down deeper, faster, to get to the fish if that's where they're feeding at. So if I'm in a fat, if a fish are holding the faster water, that's a nymph they want. By adding an oversized bead, that extra weight helps me get down to them without having to use lead. Uh, yeah. Good call, Seth. 
Okay. Now, some of these things, just to give you guys an idea, some of the things I talked about. I was talking about like early season stalker stuff. Um, this is a pinker bead, but this would be kind of what you call like the pumpkin pheasant tail. I tie mine on a caddis bead. Just a normal pheasant tail ice dub, pink and orange beads. Seems to work real well in the spring. Now, a lot of guys, you're fishing eggs. One thing I found with eggs, and this is kind of was a learned because we had to at one of the comps is I will have eggs everywhere from unweighted to heavy tungsten. Especially with comp stuff, but I've even found it to be effective. One of the most effective ways I've found of fish beads or fish eggs is in when in shallow water we run into this one there's, with a glass bead. Just enough to break the surface. And by shallow water, and you get some of these wild brown trout streams, especially the limestone streams, those fish are holding and this barely covers their back. They're holding there and they're feeding heavy, whether they're behind, they're feeding on eggs, for whatever reason, they're, they're acting to eggs. Say it's in the fall, they just know eggs are around, or in the spring they're on the suckers. The suckers tend to kind of spawn in that kind of water and the trout will set up behind them. Always will have, I'll always, always have a few eggs, glass beads, just enough to lightly get in. Even my squirmy wormies at times, I will have some lighter unweighted or a little bead just enough to break that surface tension to get down with those too so yes everybody's like junk fly junk fly but honestly you still got to be able to cover the situation where those fish are at so i might have three or four weights even of that kind of stuff anything else other questions comments anything you guys like to see in the future i can go into some stuff on different hooks and that uh whatever thinking about possibly doing some actual leader tying stuff as far as down a few of the leaders i've come up with over the last few years nothing's really that hard but it's still some good information i think that puts us about a half hour there and if we got any of the guys still here and comment if you are that would want to go over the the weights and tungsten bead stuff again i know i had a few guys at the beginning that were really all right yeah that's definitely something i'll be doing we'll be doing in the future some leader formulas awesome <laughs> rules and rags we can go into that but kind of goes the rules and rags as far as with beads now you hear me confirm as far as the rules go with beads in competition everything's got to be below a four millimeter bead is the largest you can have you're only allowed to have one bead exposed on the hook so with that the key there is one bead exposed so like i mentioned later earlier i put five six of them on a hook to get the weight i wanted to get a super super heavy fly, heavy fly in some flood conditions you still can only show one bead and don't forget you can also add lead like you can really make your flies heavy especially with these tungsten, and a little bit of lead to where you're basically just lobbing them and i know a lot of guys complain it's not really true fly fishing at that point but hey sometimes you get in these tough water especially these competitions and stuff you will need to probably go ahead and just go ahead and do it because you it's the only way you're going to get down to them Uh, any controller okay good ideas guys yeah there is more fly tying videos in the works i actually got some stuff coming to do the setups to get more of them going we're going to be more on the style with what you see on youtube so we'll definitely have some more fly tying stuff and it's going to be a little bit of everything one of the things we're really pushing towards is we're keeping the comp stuff but we're also going back in fly fishing fly fishing and every technique and i stress this with guys that coming in it pays to be a good wet fly fisherman. It pays to be a good dry fly fisherman. Nymphing is not the only game. And I can't tell you how many times when it came to competitions, the difference between finishing in the top and finishing in the bottom is the guy that was a good wet fly guy or the guy that was a good streamer guy and nymphs and could, knew when to switch between them and know what tactics they needed to use. And,
benefits of being a controller at a comp up your own game. So I got some ideas there. Anybody's got anything, feel free to message the page. Um, we'll take any ideas out there. We're really just looking for catering to what you guys want. So with that, I think I could ramble on more about some of this stuff. So I'll give you guys a couple more minutes if you got any questions. And anything like that. But let's just see. I'll show you guys here. And these colors are totally random on this. But let's just, I'm going to show you three of the same fly, like I'd mentioned, in three different weights. And these are different color beads, but you'll get the idea. These are all three waltz worms. I just got to get these in my hand where you can see. Now, if you can see there, just all three simple waltz worms. As you can see, I'm not, there's more in here if I dig in. I got them in even a little bit more size on there. That's what I mean by the same fly, three different weights, four different weights, plus you can add in brass. Just to begin able to cover your bases, and I know some of you, I seen. I don't know if the guys are still on here. I saw some of the more seasoned comp guys log in. I'm sure they kind of agree with me, but it looks like we're losing most of the crowd now, but I'm done with most of what I had. So thank you guys for tuning in. Try to make these weekly. Um... If not weekly, a couple times a month. So feel free to send any questions, comments out. If you need any questions on beads, colors like that, again, I recommend silver, unfinished, anodized pink. And there's a new color we have out right now that's coming. That's really cool. I haven't played around with it too much, but I'm going to have some patterns come with it. It's an anodized, like, orangish color really looks like it's going to be a cool pattern especially on some scuds and stuff like that so that's i'll have some patterns coming with that one we definitely want you guys want to get all right thank you guys appreciate it so any more questions i'm out of here then all right thanks guys